This listener mailbag and NBA picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Sign up using our link and receive a five hundred dollars risk free bet. That's right, five hundred dollars. And if you send in your first bet slip, you'll get a free T-shirt. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash w y n n for a five hundred dollars risk free bet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash w y n n. We're also brought to you by Better Than Vegas. Better Than Vegas is the home for avid sports betters, providing insights, analysis, and free betting picks. Better Than Vegas. It's like YouTube for sports betting. Make sure to subscribe to our page so you don't miss a pick. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. We're also brought to you by Better Edge. Better Edge is a stock exchange for sports bets, allowing you to buy and sell betting positions like a stock market. The best part is it allows you to bet with no VIG. That's right, no VIG betting that's legal in 40 states. Sign up at betteredge.com, promo code SGP for a free $10 bet. That's B E T T O R edge.com, promo code S G P. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in pay per head providers that make it super easy to start your own sports book. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. It's happening, Kramer Dog. I'm sorry. What was that, Sean? I was uh, too busy checking uh, the, the value of my portfolio. <laughs> to the moon. Yeah, everyone's going crazy about uh, stocks, GameStop, AMC. Listen, as as a brand for the people, Sean, we always got to give a, a little dap to another revolution happening in front of our yes. eyes. So, and you know, shout out to Dogecoin. Yeah, Dogecoin. <laughs> Popping off some stonks, uh, popping <laughs> off. Pretty funny couple of days. Yeah, it is weird. Robin Hood versus uh, rich, versus rich, the world. It rich. appears. Uh, it's you know. So we got an awesome show here. We're gonna do a uh, kick off the first segment. Listener hell bag. Then we're gonna be joined by Ryan Rich Fat Baby McKee, talking some NBA picks, NBA gambling. Before we do that, Ryan, of course. Super Bowl right around the corner. Perfect time to sign up with the presenting sponsor, Win Bet. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N. Get a five hundred dollar risk free bet. That's right, up to five hundred dollar risk free bet. Uh, give it a spin. Active right now in New Jersey. Active right now in Colorado. Michigan coming soon. Hold the line. Stay tight. Uh, we got that coming for you. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win where you can win, Ryan. And uh, speaking of win, I think the best listener question should get a hoodie. And uh, we'll get into it right now. Am I supposed to argue the other side of that? No, no hoodie. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) No free merch for you. All right. First one coming up. As an Eagles fan, do you think the Sirianni hire was done because (laughs) he'd be easier to control by Roseman and Lori compared to bigger names who might have asked for more control? I think Doug's view for the Eagles involved Hertz long term choice. I can agree with, and this was purely a move to save their ass from a potential fifty nine million dead cap space hit. There was no way Wentz was staying if Doug came back, and no way the Eagles would let that much cap go to waste. Now, if we can only get some guys that can stay healthy along with some big name receivers, let it ride, Jason J Swob fifty four Swoboda, the people's D Gen. Okay. Ryan. Speaking of the people, how say you? Do you think the uh, Sirianni huh, hire was I, was tied at all to the control issue? Really, the Eagles question, right to the top of the list. Of I course, went it in, is. I went in in order. I mean, I think one of the things that's obviously happened and and happening in Eagles land for for the existence of Jeffrey Jeffrey Lurie is he's low key involved, and and Howie Roseman, you know, he somehow he has the ear. Uh, maybe it's like a, a goat fucking picture. I don't know, but and Howie Roseman didn't like the situation, so you bring in a guy who, yeah, obviously less power, obviously less clout. Yeah, but uh, also they step tri- in line. They I, I tried know. to get Lincoln Riley, who I don't think they would have as much control over. And to the Eagles' credit right. and to management credit, I mean, all the guys Sirianni is bringing in seem like guys that Sirianni would hire. It doesn't it doesn't seem like they were involved in hiring his assistants? And whoever, I, I think they did want to bring in someone that could fix Wentz, or at least had a plan to fix Wentz, and I, I think that makes sense. I mean, if they're going to keep him, and I think it looks like they're probably going to keep him, but uh, I mean, why would you not want to try and fix him? You know, Listen. cap cap 
ramifications aside. I'm fine with them going forward with uh, Hertz moving forward, but I get why the ownership would want to try and fix them. Coaching splashes, coaching splash hires almost never work out. So you're always better off hiring the guy that's lesser. I mean, this is the same thing I said about Joe Judge last year, which is you're you're better off with a guy who's not known for doing something with a different team. And so, you know, I, I, like I said, I was, I was very excited for the pr- prospect of McDaniels. Oh, that would have been funny. Uh, that would have been easy to lean into with this. I don't know anything about this guy and it's probably a decent hire ba- based on the fact that he's yeah, I mean, lesser known. It's a better hire than McDaniels. It, it, so. it fits the, you know, they brought in Andy Reed. They brought in Doug Peterson kind of under the radar guys at the time. Chip Kelly was kind of the outlier guy. He was a, he was a big name guy, a splashy guy. Peterson obviously worked out. They won a Super Bowl. Reed obviously but it's worked splashy out. Splashy in the way that it makes the owner and the GM like look smarter. Specifically, the owner, right? Like Chip Kelly was like, "Ooh, that's a smart hire." Yeah. Same thing with Lincoln. Lincoln Riley would have been the same type of hire. So very on brand. Sean, did you put like did this get to the top of the stack so you could plug the Die Hard Eagles podcast? Is no, what? Ryan. But we will be. Uh, we'll be breaking down <laughs> all the Eagles news on its own feed. The Die Hard Eagles podcast. Put that in Apple Podcasts. Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. All right, this one a little off the uh, rails here. Mm. One, can a police horse arrest a regular horse? Two, in the movie Cars, do they need life insurance or car insurance? Uh, does this win me a free SGP hoodie? You need to be represented in Minneapolis, Chicago, Dublin. So uh, there you go with that one. Oh wait, and then I think this was. <laughs> The second part of the question as well. If there was a quarterback battle royale, who is the last man standing, first man out, and DJ's bet? He's saying last man standing, Josh Allen, first man out, Kyler, hashtag DJ's only, Jacoby Brissett. Well, I, I would say. Well, let's go backwards because it's more. Def- should we? Yeah, let's go backwards. So if this is a Royal Rumble style, <clears throat> are they all starting at the same time? Or are we like doing reverse age or something like that? Because. I, I can't imagine Philip Rivers lasting very long mm. in any sort of athletic competition against the 31 other starting quarterbacks in the NFL. Yeah, I, I say Jared Goff. Clearly, I'm not a big mm. golf guy, but I, I well, think Glo- neither Goff, is Sean McVay. Yeah, opening it up to uh, <laughs> Wolford of uh, Wall Street. There. Sean, I mean, uh, not not to to pry, but. Uh, are we are we million are we, are we set for life based on Sucks Island? It's 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 right up there with GameStop. Great great investment opportunity. Naming rights might be for sale too if, if he's no longer a starter. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what we're gonna have to do then. Uh, I I think first man out is definitely Jared Goff. Last man standing. That's an interesting one. I I would again obviously Jared. <laughs> again, I think. Uh, I mean, Josh Allen is a good one. The guy's built like a beast, but mm. I would say he kind of has a bit of that millennial Drew Locke look in the face. Like, I don't know how tough he is. I know he's a tough football player, but it, like, what kind of man is like? Is he gonna go? What place is he gonna go to from the from the fight to the death angle? You know, unlimited. How does how does Russell Wilson do? I think he's kind of interesting. Low center of gravity. Yeah. Scrappy, probably willing to uh, go he's for kinda, the. He's kind of like a pretty boy, though. I, you know, he's he's right in there with some of the some of the fancier wrestlers. I, I think Lamar Jackson might actually be an interesting one. Physical guy, very fast, elusive, elusive in small spaces. I mean, he's an athlete. He can do everything you want out of an athlete, except throw a football. I, I think he is. This is kind of an event built for Lamar Jackson. I kind of like. I'd put some dark horse money on Big Ben. Mm. Never know. He might show up with a couple of his buddies to watch the door. No, yeah, no. I can see. Uh, <laughs> no, you don't. As like far my, as someone, pick, Big Ben Tahoe. No, I mean, as as far, as far as someone picking up a chair and like Ooh, whacking may, someone across maybe the head. He's got the mankind like fake skin flap where he can pull out the razor blade. Yeah, I, I <laughs> like Kyler. <laughs> I like uh, I like Big Ben as a DJ's only bet. There, he he could be a cert. He certainly would be a dark horse. Yeah, I mean, also Gardner Minshew. Oh, Watch yeah. out for that dude, Gardner I mean, Minshew. He's just sitting there stroking his mustache, flapping his uh, mullet in the wind. His I, powers are strong. He is he is a classic Dejan Zoli. Hashtag Dejan Zoli. Mike Glennon actually might be first out. He's Ooh, really? he's kind of a giant pussy. Yeah, but I come do on. have Jared a personal. Goff, he's a, a j- he might be a giant pussy, but he's still a giant. I don't know. I, I I think Jared Goff could be in trouble there. All right. And the police horse bit, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess a, a one horse could kick the shit out of the other horse. That's yeah, how- I do. I don't know about that. I do know 
you can get in trouble for assaulting an officer yeah. uh, if you punch <laughs> a police horse. Because it happened in my hometown. Uh, an off officer Rusty was assaulted, and the guy did uh, I think a couple of weeks in jail. He got drunk at Music Fest, which is the annual music festival. Animals. It was pretty sweet, and uh, it was always a good time to walk around, vodka and water bottles in high school. That was the move, and uh, get really <laughs> drunk. But well, yeah, it's apparently got water, someone, bro. Apparently, someone <laughs> got real. Yeah, I don't know who we're fooling. Apparently, got uh, some, and it was before everyone was always carrying water bottles too. So it was very. <laughs> Very obvious <laughs> before hydration being hip. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Rusty got uh punch in the face by some dude. And uh, I think Rusty was all right, but they definitely arrested that guy. Can Art I, can I throw out one more like real dark horse guy for the uh, Royal rumble bit Stafford. Ooh. All right. Stafford's kind of a badass. Yeah. I don't know. He's shotguns beers. So I, I definitely have him above Aaron Rodgers. Drew Brees could be first out too. Like, yeah. He, he's he can't underrated. even lift his, can't lift his <laughs> arm above his shoulder. Those ribs. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe Drew Brees is the way to go. Kirk cousins. I don't see staying, <laughs> staying around very long. Drew lock also oh. on the early exit list. No, he probably want to talk out. about millennial guys. <laughs> maybe he, he does have that backpack. He likes to wear. No, He would opt out. He wouldn't even participate. It's my right, Sean. It's my right. All right. Next question. What inspired you guys to found SGP besides the obvious love for sports and gambling? How do you guys stay positive and so confident with your picks when you get on a major cooler? Appreciate it. As always, boys, your number one Canadian fan, Zach Burke. Ryan, I think maybe you could answer the cooler uh, question because I don't <laughs> lose, baby. Red <laughs> fucking hot. I was gonna say I'm I'm unaware of what that emotion feels like, Sean. Yeah, uh, you know it, it, the key is, and, and you know if you've listened to this show, you've heard me say this, but there is a reason, Sean. The windshield yes. is larger than the rearview mirror. Can't do anything about those losses, Ryan. I, I think it, the key for me as a suspicious gambler is. When I'm when I'm on a cool streak, I like to shake things up. Juju Just wise, to be clear, superstitious gambler is what you tried to say, right? What did I say? Suspicious. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I am suspicious at times. <laughs> superstitious gambler. I I like to shake up the juju after going zero and six on the wild card weekend. Yep. I requested you cut my hair, give me a <laughs> head shave before the divisional round. Went four and zero in the divisional round. Thought I was above getting a haircut before the conference championship mm. games. That cost <laughs> me big up. time. So you got to trust the process there. Uh, uh, two things, yeah, not a metaphor. Actually, cutting hair. Yeah, and y you were like irritated. We had to do the haircut during the first quarter. Didn't even get it done, done before. So yeah, I didn't. I didn't know it was all about that superstitious. Well, we will be getting a haircut before the Super Bowl, Ryan. So oh, you can I, look good. forward to I'll that. I'll have to pencil part that into of, my part schedule. of the pregame show. Uh, why did we? Uh, what inspired us to found SGP? He said the obvious love of sports and gambling. Yeah. I think. I mean, podcasts. I guess w were around by then. Um, yes, but they were. We didn't invent podcasts. <laughs> we didn't invent to podcasts. clarify, and and you had a podcast previous that we had done a couple like NFL sports ball related ones. Yeah, and realized that maybe there was a maybe there was a market for that. Maybe there were other DGens, and so yeah, the rest. Of what up the bad signal? Only. Yeah, I, I think we just realized we love talking about betting on sports. There's got to be fellow guys who like gambling on sports and talking <laughs> about it on the internet, and uh, we were right. Yeah, I mean the the key was at that point there was nothing but pussies talking about gambling. It yes. was the worst kind of show. Still still very heavy pussy. A lot of pussies still out there. It's gotten better, but a lot of people that clearly aren't aren't feeling the losses, right? Like they're 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 not they're talking about the picks, they're not throwing their cold hard cash on the pick, Sean. Next Saw question. you guys yeah, I was pulling it up, Ryan. Uh, I love playing futures because I get enjoyment out of them for the whole season, but I struggle knowing when is the best time to play them. Sounds like a serious question. Do you play them early in the season because the team you like may lose value if they start strong? Do you wait half a season to let the contenders separate themselves a bit, eliminate some of the risk, potentially betting on a dud? Does the strategy vary from sport to sport? Meaning, do you wait for some sports and play early on others? Example, I like to play it out. I like to let it play out a bit in college basketball futures. Because uh, this season you would have uh, been better off lighting your cash on fire than playing <laughs> futures on usual blue chips. But if you waited, you also lost the value in Gonzaga and Baylor in the NFL. Chiefs were a clear favorite entering the season. So if you liked them but waited, you lost a lot of value. A lot to unpack there, Ryan. Yeah. What do you, what is your take on futures? Future strategy? I think you can. You know, I think from like the investment per perspective, I 
you know, you have to go sport by sport and apply different strategies. Like yeah. college basketball, in my opinion, you very rarely are going to beat the closing odds heading into the tournament unless you're just playing some crazy dark horse. So you might as well just wait. You're better off just waiting till conference tournament time. For the NFL, it's more of like a spiritual thing. Of course, I'm going to play futures before the season. Yeah. Because that's like, I'm testing myself. It's not so much about getting the best value more than it is. I want my opinion to like, it's undoctored. We haven't seen these teams yet. That's where you're going to get the most separation. But, you know, do I play futures throughout the NFL season? Yes. I, I buy. And I would say like my strategy on NFL is I, I take some preseason hold, but I do buy a lot of like, div, like division to win division, for example, something I'll buy more in season Yeah, win totals, obviously preseason futures on the super bowl. I rarely buy those in season until the postseason. Yeah. So that those would be my, and then like NBA, you know, you you can just light your, light your money on fire. NBA futures are the worst. I, I stay away from, from NBA futures. Well, because you just bet the favorite. It's like, oh, let's see, Golden State. Oh, yeah. Cool. I mean, here, here's the thing. I, I think if you're betting an NFL long shot, you want to do a preseason because, in general, probably long shots. You yeah, might. you want to bet as early or preseason, you know, as early as you can get them. I mean, like the Chiefs, for instance. If you waited to bet them, that was probably fine this year, especially. You're like their price probably didn't change tremendously. At, yeah, and another they were such a heavy favorite. And if you're gonna if you're gonna bet on a heavy favorite in the NFL, I, I think you're better just kind of waiting the season out a little bit. I mean, the the Chiefs price going into the playoffs probably not tremendously different than the Chiefs price going to start the season, and you get the entire yeah. season to see if there's any sort of catastrophic injury. Yeah, and I and I think I just I think with a lot of these sports, you really just you, futures are kind of crazy because they're they're binary outcomes unless you're selling them on prop spot prop swap and so much the the injury variance of a lot of these sports makes it so it's dangerous, especially football. So I, I don't know. I may, maybe the maybe the advice is be smart and and just take take your futures preseason and buy them right before the postseason if that's if yeah. That's I, I do, do think NFL division futures those are probably okay to dabble in midseason. But uh, also, don't be afraid of like the mechanical parlay with some of this stuff. Yeah. Now, I will say a good example of when you buy the future is like Alabama, right? We know yeah. Alabama's going to we be throwing that out there uh, that it was like even money. Uh, yeah. At one point later in the season, you can even get plus one fifty. Alab yeah. Alabama national champion minus one ten or whatever it was. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you, they're almost certainly going to be playing and then you can figure it out. Then that's the other thing with futures is you should in theory be positioned to hedge, but you know, we don't necessarily agree with Not that. huge hed hedgers here. All right. A uh, couple of statements before my questions. One. Kobe Ant needs to go through a whole podcast with this Mike Tyson lisp. Two, I need you to continue to pronounce my friend Jake Paquin's name incorrectly. Our group chat is much funny because you guys pronounce it incorrectly, but for your information, it's correctly pronounced Paquin. Now to get to the question, and I feel horrible for mispronouncing Jake Paquin's name the whole time. Who, who's that? You mean Jake Paquin? Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it's P A Q U I N. I, I, I just kind of put the cut in there. Did a little bit of a survey. People agree it should be Paquin. So. Okay, so maybe we can officially change his name to Jake Paquin. Maybe Jake's confused. <laughs> Jake Paquin. Now <laughs> he does a bunch of the graphics for us. Yeah, does an awesome job. We love Jake. Now to the question. It seems like you guys, Sean and Ryan, are and very non-confrontational when you talk trash shit to each other. Has there ever been a time when either of you <laughs> have crossed the line when talking trash to each other? Cheers. Danny two watches. I mean, I can't speak for Sean's pussy ass, but I've never felt like a line was crossed. No, I mean, you know, it got a little tense there uh, on the, on the Eagles. That's because you were, you were disappointed in your team. I understood why no, you were, so you, were you were being way over the top with your, uh, <laughs> The, oh, no, your no. your horrible I mean, I, take on Doug Peterson I, and playing I, Nate Sudfeld. I for felt sad throws. that you were so disappointed in your in your franchise, but we we moved past it. Yeah, I feel like maybe there was a uh, way back in the day an Eagles Giants game. I remember breaking a couple of plastic deck chairs. I don't even know if I was angry at you, but uh, no, I, I chucked I some chairs there. That's probably uh, you know. I don't, but I don't remember nothing directing, rings a bell. directing them at you. I mean, I do remember when we were at the Donovan McNabb 12 sack 
OCU Menorah six sack game when uh, I had to save your life from oh, a, a, a band of savage Giants <laughs> fans. But other than that, no. Well, then there was a time you tried to uh, bust my door down, but that seemed unrelated Wait, to being angry at. It Bring was, this back to me because I've done some drugs between then and now. It was the Virginia Tech game where Tyrod oh. lost his red shirt. And Sh- you this is out. why I hate Mike Glennon because <laughs> Sean Glennon was so bad in the first quarter. They ripped the red shirt off Tyrod Taylor. And then LSU, I think 48 to three, maybe 48 to nine. I don't know. It was yeah. a bad day. Yeah. A lot, we, I black, I was time traveling that night. Yeah. And you tried to bust through my door. It seemed unrelated to anything I had done. <laughs> And uh, very trying unclear. to drop someone like a bag of bricks. Yeah, you That's kept repeating that phrase. Say. I'm gonna drop you like a bag of bricks, and it was it wasn't really directed at anyone. It appeared to be directed at my door. I was well, just in my room. There was a point where I think my masculinity w- was challenged in the form of someone trying to say that I couldn't block something. I forget what the 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 use case was, but someone basically said I couldn't block a female, like offensive line <laughs> style, something like that. Took offense to it. All right. Anyway. What is the first non football, <laughs> non work site that y'all open up on the laptop? What what does that mean? Well, non like, work? Well, non non well, I guess I don't know, non sports site. What is the first kind of site you open up your laptop to? I mean, other than when I hit uh, like the the porn Reddit in the morning just yes. to wake up. Just okay. see what what fresh um, stuff has come in. Yeah, I Long probably cocks. I probably fire open like the Reddit app. Honestly, like it's probably Reddit and then Twitter and then I don't know some sports shit. Fire up Reddit and then I go yeah. to Coin Market Cap, <laughs> see how uh, crypto holdings are looking. <laughs> That's pretty much it for me. And then I'll start uh, plugging away on the sports. Reddit actually is the best for sports stuff like that. I was I trying mean, to a lot explain of the, it to someone. It's like it's like Twitter if you had a hundred percent of the control over what you saw. Yeah, Twitter, Basically. and then also just the best stuff gets voted to the top. You don't have to like sort through everything. Yeah, it's but not please someone follow else. us on Twitter at Gambling <laughs> Podcast, and we do have a subreddit. If people are on Reddit, uh, Reddit like r slash Sports Gambling is uh, we're moderators there, so please feel free to like start posting in there yeah. your own links, whatever. Uh, get some text threads going on. Uh, also has a, another addition to this question: What's more difficult? Sean doing a month of the soy boy diet or Kramer doing a 15 minute stand up at the comedy store. All right, come on. Love the lock dog tease contest. Got a couple of shirts because of it. Thanks, Pierre. I'll let you answer this first before you before I just explain reality. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Kramer has has done some stand up comedy. He once roasted Nikki Glazer. So if you <laughs> You want to Google Nikki Glazer? He roasted her in our garage. I, no, so, I didn't just roast her. I was the roast master. Yes, so. that's right. Pl- playing the Jeffrey, Jeffrey Ross, Ross role. There you go. So maybe that's easier. Yeah, I don't know if I could do a full month of soy boy like Kramer and really commit to that lifestyle. Stop it. What's what's your answer on this, Ryan? I, I mean, you live with a a, a, a vegan vegetarian. No, so not vegan, vegetarian. vegetarian. So I would imagine you you could easily. Just go to your Monday through Friday routine and eat nothing but but veg, vegetarian diet. Um, I don't know, Ryan. I'm a I'm a man who likes good red meat. I just had a, a awesome steak. I know you say you're kind of out on red meat. I love it. I live for types. it. So I'm out I, on I think I think you doing stand up is much easier than an alpha like me giving up some of that sweet sweet red meat protein. I mean, that's just because I'm fucking funny, Sean. <laughs> there you go. All right, next question. Like most novice gamblers, I'm pretty self-conscious about my unit size. I never want to bring it up and sound like a noob and guys never talk about it publicly. Can we just talk about how big our fucking units are for once? So I know what I'm working with. Let's make it simple. Say you have 1000 in your bankroll and you're a big football better. How much are you putting in play on Saturday and how much on a game you feel great about? Assuming I listen to Colby and I am now up a hundred. Same question regarding uh, game slash whole slate. Thanks for a great season. Let it ride, Eric. Uh, I mean, does he want to explain Long basic Cox. gambling economics? I mean, what you should be betting around. So if you are responsible, which I would say we're not, we're a little bit more risk. Oh, oh, willing to take on risk, I would say. So maybe yeah. we're not doing the one percent per bet. That the uh, you know the stock 
betting. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, would, if you had a thousand, would call if you had a thousand bucks set aside, that really is like, okay, this is my gambling budget. I'm not moving away from it. I think. Let's talk reality. I think so, fifty dollars a unit. If you have a thousand dollars set aside, so five percent is probably a realistic margin. Because also, if you lose twenty units, it's probably time to you know sit back, relax, cool off, shave your head, do a little juju adjustment before reloading. So I I legitimately think five percent is probably a good number. The reality is most well, people at least that you get enough. Uh, you know, enough rush off of it. Well, and that's the thing, right? Like the, the most professionals will tell you like that 1% rule or whatever it is, because they're treating, you know, this is, this is, this is not a short yeah. game. It's a long game. You're playing the pl- the positive EV, whatever. Uh, I mean, I can tell you personally, y- you gotta be able to drop 20. Like you have to be able to have a 20 unit, a Swing. negative 20 unit weekend and not feel like you want to kill yourself. Yeah. Like it's if, probably if, a good if old Ryan would tell young Ryan something that would be that like, just apply the 20 unit rule. Can I lose 20 units in a weekend? Yeah. If the answer is yes. Okay. That's an okay unit side. Now, is it okay to say, fuck it and push all in on <laughs> Sunday night sometimes? Uh, yeah. Because we want the rush, right? If I was trying to make 3% long term. Yeah. I'll fucking go buy a CD. All right. <laughs> I'm here for the rush. I'm here for the action. I'm here yeah, for that yep. feeling when Dawson Knox enters the end zone when you got 20 to one in your pocket. Yes, yeah, so you have to <laughs> you have to balance the entertainment value of feeling alive when you hit a 20 to one dog or when you when we will eventually hit that <laughs> DGEN's only prop bet or when you cash second place in a millionaire maker. So yeah. you want to be able to still feel alive and factor that in. I, I think Again, five percent unit is probably a realistic enough. Um, it's more of a blue collar. Like the white five, collar five answer is one percent. Yeah, five percent realistic enough that people may actually stick to that advice. Because if you don't stick to it, it's completely irrelevant. Then you're yeah. just doing the week to week game. But, which, but within that unit size, I think two unit. You know, one unit a game. But hey, if you really like something, maybe throw two units on it. Or like, for instance, your lock. Maybe put two units on your dog maybe put one unit on then like a tease, a half a unit. I mean the like DJ move. If you're going to play like a spread and money line on the same game, I used to apply the one third rule. So I'll play uh, a three to one ratio of spread to money line. If it's a dog, uh, another, you know, I, I think the other thing that people don't be above this because there's a reason bookies do a week to week accounting model because they don't want you to see how you've been doing. If you haven't been doing well. So, you know, don't be above keeping a spreadsheet just to keep tabs on yourself. Yeah, no. And because and other, because th- then it doesn't matter. Like, don't ask me the question if you're not going to keep track Yeah, or use a pick tracking service like bet spurts log, you know, so you don't actually have to manually enter in this in what, the, you know, like spreadsheets. No, I mean, yeah, bet starts makes it real easy, but I'm saying stuff like that is good. And also reminds yourself. Cause I get in that sometimes where like I'm betting shit and then I'm like, why do I fucking bet this? Uh, what am I doing? Like, if I feel like if I actually looked at that number, I would know. Don't do that. You have you have strengths. You have a wheelhouse. Stay in that. So I, I think keeping track of your shit is is a good idea as well. Yeah, and you know, open open unit size. Open unit size, Ryan. Before we uh, move on to some NBA picks, bring on Rich Fat Baby. Who gets the hoodie? I'm gonna throw it out there. I do like the battle uh, royale QB question. That is fun. But I do like I, uh, yeah I I think the guy coming in Eric say admitting you know it takes a brave man to admit he's self conscious about his mm-hmm. unit size I did think we were about to hear a question. eugenics read or a new genics whatever uh, Frank Thomas is uh for the big hurt is uh, putting out there I thought we were gonna talk about low T so I I'm voting Eric who is your vote for the hoodie Ryan. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to get down on the unit size question as well. Uh, and the last thing I'll say about that is be proud about your unit size, no matter how big or small it is <laughs> long uh, cock. shout out to Alan Cooley, because that that's a, that's a man proud of his unit, not afraid to show off his unit in the locker room. And, and yeah, this is, <laughs> and speaking of, well, I wasn't talking about in the locker room, <laughs> Jesus. Ugh. Uh, you know, mix it up. It's it's perfect time. <laughs> You're in a safe place here in our locker room. Oh man, want to shout out Better Edge? That's right, Better Edge, the people's sports book. That's right. Tired of paying big? 
you know, much like we're seeing a people's moving in the stock market, you can take the people's move it to sports gambling with better edge. That's right. Buy and sell betting positions with no third party involved, no VIG. There's no house. That means no VIG. And you can play for real money in 40 states. Oh, we're going to have fun in the uh, college basketball picks podcast, right? Mm. Because one person was able to beat Colby Dan only one. So wow. they took down the entire prize pool. I went all in on Seton hall. Didn't oh go my well. God. Seton hall Classic. completely collapsed Kramer FML tour. And we're going to be putting our, uh, some super bowl bets on over at better edge. So if you like the opposite side, you can take it. And uh, best part is sign up at betteredge.com. Use that promo code SGP, get a free $10 bet again. You can bet for real money. Go through, get verified, sign up, get that sweet ten dollar bet free. B e t t o r edge dot com promo code S G P. Joining us on the line, host of the NBA Gambling Podcast and site editor over at sportsgamblingpodcast dot com, Ryan Rich Fat Baby McKee. What's hey, happening? Hey. Oh, not much. I was just. Uh... I was watching, I was watching the game. I was watching the the Rockets game. Um, have money on them. Moonoff talked to me into taking them tonight, <laughs> so uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Got to beat uh, Damian Lillard and the the beaten uh, beaten down Trailblazers right now. Yeah, Moonoff. Uh, he, he, I think he's been on a hot streak. I just know that because one of the Slack <laughs> listeners sent me a screenshot of like a sixteen parlay he put in off of Moonoff's advice. Or, I don't know, whatever it is, he turned like four dollars into a hundred dollars. And, I, I'm and always, he said, give Moon off a raise. I'm always impressed when someone can listen or like decipher. Maybe he's just following Moon off here, but like he can decipher all the picks that are being given out to fun, <laughs> somehow string together six winners. And it's just like, God damn it. I why he's, was I not Moon off Moonoff is a machine doing a ton he's of machine just giving out picks all the time yeah. on his Twitter handle and on the uh, Slack channel. Yeah, and seriously, if you're not in the Slack, I don't know what you're waiting for. There is there's a lot of fun stuff going on. One of my favorite uh, Slack storylines in the hockey uh, uh, channel there, Go Bearcats, who has never watched a hockey game in his life, has just decided to go all in, learning about hockey via <laughs> gambling, and it, it's just funny him reacting to stuff. He's like, "Oh my God, they let these guys just beat the shit out of each other!" Like he didn't, and he goes, "Oh my, oh wow, I just went down a five hour rabbit hole." Yeah. Of any uh, of the best NHL fights, this is insane, uh, dude. He's all in it. It's it's uh, I mean, it's really it, great. It is a strange sport in that in so, in some certain regards. Yeah, if you're explaining it to someone from another country, it's really hard to piece. Wait, together. so they just let this certain types of penalties? They'll just let go for like a couple minutes until people have worked everything out. <laughs> yeah, it is in, <laughs> and then they make them sit in the corner for five <laughs> minutes. It's like kids, you know. <laughs> it is. It is hilarious. And uh, speaking of picks, Moon off Ryan Richfred, Baby McKee, a bunch of the SGPN crew giving out picks over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash BTV. That takes you right to Better Than Vegas. Subscribe to our profile. Giving out video picks every day, seven days of week. Again, the free content train rolls through. And uh, yeah, it, besides our profile page, there's a bunch of du- uh, bunch of like fun handicappers just giving out a ton of free picks. I know. You're just looking to hear other people talk about sports gambling, which again, you probably are. You're listening to this podcast. Better than Vegas is the place to go. Uh, check it out and subscribe to our page. L- listen, when I'm on YouTube, like late at night, just trolling around, I end up watching videos about quantum <laughs> mechanics and black holes. When I'm on Better Than Vegas, yeah, it's I YouTube. find myself betting on a 7:30 p.m. Pacific time college basketball. It, it game. does get you excited about gambling on stuff you wouldn't normally. <laughs> Which late, is uh, late at night. I'm trolling around on Pornhub, and I find <laughs> myself. We should upload episodes of the podcast to Pornhub because I, I'm sure there's a crossover. Uh, you know, people just uh, wrap things up, and they're like, "Hey, oh, hey, wonder, uh, wonder what people like prop bet wise for the Super Bowl." <laughs> it could be, it could be a nice uh, in your refractory period, uh, hearing about some action. One, <laughs> one little anecdote before we get into NBA talk, and I know there's plenty of stuff to break down. One more anecdote after the the beat off anecdote. Exactly, <laughs> was uh, your I was uh, doing a Microsoft Teams meeting, Ryan, oh. with your wife. She was helping us with some marketing. What? Stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, Jesus! I, I, I totally blew it. This and, is uh, Ryan's roses. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> yes. Um, 
she was she was sharing an anecdote where I guess you had logged into her Zoom or or vice versa, whatever it was, or some sort of Zoom account, and she logged into like this big work event. <laughs> And her display name, someone was like, wait, who is rich fat baby? <laughs> oh shit. So uh your wife was accidentally using yeah. your Zoom and well, your Zoom name. That was the thing when uh when the pandemic first started, she was like, We don't need two Zoom accounts, we'll just share one Zoom account. <laughs> but she forgot to go in and change the name before a big ah. meeting and rich fat baby it was and the people could not let her live that down for a while oh man that is that is a classic spouse mishap that will uh haunt you in the well, workplace I mean, for years to come that's it's a pretty good name though i'm sure it got compliments yeah oh it did yeah it's probably it the did. only time you're allowed to call like uh, another person fat in the workplace without a uh, write up being <laughs> ensued <laughs> yeah. all right well, if you call them if you call them rich in front of it it's yeah. like a compliment yeah and then you're making an fun of a rich person which is always fair game <laughs> I like it. All right. We're going to take uh, I think it'd be fun to kind of hit big picture stuff. I knew you and Bronner were kind of dabbling here with the MVP race. Where are you at with the uh, NBA MVP race? Looking at some updated odds. Luca still the favorite plus 400 Giannis 450 Durant getting in there at, at plus 800 Curry a thousand uh, LeBron kind of a dark horse there at, at plus a thousand. Embiid plus one thousand. What are your thoughts on uh, the early part of the MVP race? Well, uh, I I will just mention real fast. It doesn't. It seems like the NBA just started, but because of the shortened season, we're already a, a quarter of the way through. Yeah, that's insane. So, which is nuts. And uh, something I'll mention: the uh, Cavaliers are already halfway <laughs> to their uh, going over the win total. Who thought? Um, so, I one that came up on the NBA gambling podcast the other day, just totally organically. Zach and I didn't even talk about it before the podcast. We both like Kawhi Leonard 30 to one. Ooh. Now, now, he, now, now I think he's even like 40 to one. Some places talk yeah. me into a, a Kawhi long shot here. He, after the Toronto Raptors won the NBA finals, we came into last season thinking Kawhi's the best player in the league. He's better than LeBron. He's better than Giannis. People were arguing that he's one season away from that. He didn't get injured. He, they just, you know, had a bad year last year. He seems totally locked in. He's playing back to back games. He, uh, the, one of the big arguments for why Giannis was the MVP the last two years, because he's a two way player, right? He plays offensive defense. Yeah. Kawhi does too. And Kawhi's a better shooter. So yeah, thirty that, to one odds. That's great odds for a guy who's a, who everybody agrees is a legitimate MVP candidate. Well, and 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 looking at the odds, trying to make sense uh, when I saw that number, and I haven't been following him as much. I, I'm thinking, oh, is it just because he's not playing all the games? But if he's playing back to backs, yeah, yeah, why is this? And and you know the Clippers are third in the West, but they're only like a half game back from the Lakers, one game back from the Jazz, and the Jazz won ten in a row. You imagine they cool off a little bit. If the Clippers can get the number one seed in the Western Conference, and you have a huge name like Kawhi Leonard, he's got that. How does he not load management yeah, stigma? Yeah, true, but they, it doesn't seem like he's doing it as much this year, right? Yeah, and that's a storyline that the that the press is seeing that you know he's going back to back games. He's making more of a point now. The problem is he and Paul George are both out right now with COVID or protocol bullshit. But um, before that, they were just racking up wins left and right. So I don't know. I, I, I don't understand why it's 30 to one. And in a season where anything can still happen, why not take the longer odds? Yeah. And, and Luca, it just seems, well, Hey, there's no value in it, but doesn't that kind of seem crazy to take Luca considering how the Mavs are what eight and 10 right now. I get it. They'll probably figure it out and get into the playoffs, but I feel like you have to be a one or two seed really to get the MVP Certainly there's some years like Russell Westbrook when he averaged a triple double. I think what? They were like a five or six seed then, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. But that's, yeah, that's like real a, rare. That's an outlier. I, I don't know. The Mavs are right now, they're not even in the playoffs. Like this is crazy that he's that much of a favorite. What do you think's drawing that? I mean, he came into the season with just a huge storyline. Like everybody yeah. was so pumped on him at the end of last season and everybody just collectively decided he's the next MVP before the season even started. He came in <laughs> yeah. out of shape. Uh, Porzingis came in injured. So 
they don't have the level of talent that uh, they did last season. They uh, have a, had had a bunch of pro- COVID protocol issues with a number of their role players, and they got rid of Seth Curry, which, as good as uh, Richardson is on defense, they have trouble stretching the floor without Curry there. Yeah, I mean, so, it, I don't know. No, I mean Kawhi, that's a great value. As far as uh, Joel Embiid, I, I think oh, there's certainly just got to talk about him. Yeah, I mean, what's not to like about Joel Embiid? They just beat the Lakers, and yeah, I think they're in a good spot. And again, they're the number one seed, so if they can hang on to that, and I don't think Giannis gets it back to back. They usually don't do that in what, the NBA. What was the Anthony Davis odds? I mean, sorry, and he did have, uh, he did have, he already had back to back. So I was, I was meaning like it. They don't do three in a row. They, they there's won't been do three in a row now. So the, Giannis, I can say, just throw that out. And so even if the Sixers get the two seed or the three seed, I, I think you know, I just don't Embiid think Embiid has a decent shot there. Yeah, see, I, I don't think he's gonna get it. Like I, no, I, I feel mean, like it would take a lot for him to to, to get it. Just he's having a, he's having a career year. Just from the way it works, you know. Well, yeah. yeah the, I mean, I, if he can, st- I think he Embiid came in really locked in. And his odds have risen from I think what twenty to one for the MVP preseason, and when he's up to nine to one now, I think. And so people are buying in. The problem with Philadelphia is the same problem they had last season, and we'll talk about this a little bit when we talk about the games. But they're awesome on the at road, home, yeah. And then they can't win on the road, so uh, that's going to keep coming up. I think in the the, the conversation, like when when is he going to get that team winning on the road? It is hilarious. Even with no fans, their home road split is still crazy lopsided. It makes no sense. Kevin Durant, kind of an interesting name, always for MVP. I don't know. I feel like Hart. I feel like there's no value now. I liked it before the season when he was like twelve to one. Yeah. But now that he's like plus five fifty, and Harden is there, taking yeah, away a I, lot of his shine. Yeah, I do feel like they're gonna kind of nick him for. For Harden being around, I mean, some of these other ones, Anthony Davis, I, I just don't see. Well, it's definitely LeBron then on the Lakers. Well, I mean, the odds odds show that, and LeBron is an interesting dark horse candidate. But I, why I, does it have to be LeBron? Because he's he's playing. I mean, LeBron is playing really well no, I, and, and playing know. better than Anthony Davis. There was like a storyline of, oh, he's gonna you know kind of defer and get Anthony Davis the MVP. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't really seem to be happening so far. Someone didn't check yeah. the sources on that one. LeBron wasn't ready to hand it off. Yeah, it's crazy that Kawhi and uh, you know even that was that was a made up storyline last year too, and it didn't play out. And, and people are like, "Well, he'll hand over the reins this year." I never <laughs> believed that for a minute. Like LeBron said, he was going to take his foot off the gas and just hand it over uh, at the very beginning of the season, and then he would ramp it up. But he's played more games than AD. Yeah, no. As much as we like to bust LeBron's chops at sometimes, but like um, alphas are alphas. Look, Col- Colby was or Kobe was was like an alpha until he but like his Achilles popped. Yeah, for the literally last time. just blew out. Yeah, I, I I mean you saw him reacting to the the Cavs bench when they were kind of getting chippy. I mean this is like regular season game for him. He still he still has a little chip on his shoulder, and I wouldn't I wouldn't be shocked as, as far as like MVP candidates in that range. For uh, him to kind of have a run, what and about the storyline too? Right, like yeah, old it, man. A, a lot of it, a lot of it's narrative when in the MVP voting. They're like, let's get LeBron his last MVP. Like he he's earned it. He's been the best player in the league for multiple seasons, and we haven't given it to him. Yeah, yeah. the old guy needs to get the Super Bowl, and the old guy needs to get the MVP one more t- time. Twenty twenty yeah. hashtag twenty twenty one. Sean, moving over to uh, Rookie of the Year. It, it seems like it's just Lamelo Ball and everyone else. What are you? What are your thoughts on uh, Rookie of the Year? Any any candidates besides Lamelo Ball interest you? Yeah, I mean Lamelo Ball doesn't interest me because I don't think there's any value there right now. And yeah, I don't think he's, he's laying minus one eighty five. He's he's the one getting all the shine just like in the national media because of he just makes these crazy passes but his his stats aren't necessarily that much better than any of the other rookies. Uh Halliburton looks really good but he's not really a star but everybody keeps talking. He's like Halliburton is all the basketball nerds favorite rookie right now cuz he's just <laughs> fitting in so well with his Kings team but he's not putting up crazy stats either. I could see the value I see is in Wiseman at 11 yeah. to 1. Um, now, a big man hasn't won the rookie of the year 
since Towns, uh, and that was in uh, 2015. So maybe they're due. I think the they tend to be guards more often than not rookie of the year because they just have the ball in their hand more often. But if you know, if, if there's not like another clear cut winner of a guard, I like Wiseman better with that value. Um, I'm bummed that oh, and Cole Anthony at 28 to one for the Magic. He's really stepped up. Uh, uh, since a couple of their guards went down and he's playing a lot of minutes and hit that crazy game winner uh, about a week back. And so I could see him, if you want a, a little bit more of a long shot, hit Cole Anthony 28 to one. Hashtag Dejans only. Well, and he was one of the guys that was like, I feel like that was a lot of the talk during the draft process. Like if he get, you know, if he gets into a, the right situation, he could be something, but yep. yeah. And, yeah. and at least, uh, you know, with James Wiseman, he's, he, I don't know. The Warriors, a little bit more higher profile team. Cole Anthony with the Magic. I don't know how many how many Magic games voters are going to be watching. So that that could be a tough little sell. But yeah, I mean, I definitely Wiseman really makes sense. And yeah, I mean, I think it, the the Warriors are going to have to start turning into the same like Warriors machine or similar to they were. They're going to have to start winning more games if they see him contributing in the starting lineup. And if like Draymond can stop yelling at him all the time, maybe. <laughs> Maybe, uh, well, yeah, but I mean, like, if, war up again. if Warriors, you know, they're the sixth seed right now, if they get into the top four, maybe start winning more games, he's kind of active part of that. I, I could definitely see that Wiseman narrative, yeah. And he also seems like a guy who his game, I don't know, like, I could see him rounding out in that second half where LaMelo Ball, I don't know, just the lack of points, I think. Justifies not taking him at minus 185. His last name favorite. justifies not taking him. Yeah, there's probably enough people that just find the ball family annoying and want no part of it. So I I, I think that's pretty fair. And uh, the Hornets coach has been looking for a reason not to start him, or you know, like he yeah. he's trying to he's trying to make a point about it. You know, I, every, everybody says that Lamelo's bought in. Um, so he seems like a better teammate than that was the big knock on him that he wasn't going to be a big teammate. There was a prima donna, but he seems pretty bought in. But the poor, the coach is still making a point like where well, I'm not going to play that many minutes. So we'll see. I don't know. Ma imagine growing up in that toxic environment <laughs> and not being <laughs> just a complete disaster. It is. It is pretty crazy. <laughs> division futures. Any, uh, I, I normally don't dabble with the NBA division futures, but there's certainly with this shortened season. I, I don't know. There's maybe some angles there. Anything jumping out at you, uh, rich fat baby here on NBA division futures. Yeah. Um, well, there's no value like with the Jazz going on that crazy run. Um, there, thankfully, uh, Zach and I, if you, everybody, people were listening, we gave out the Jazz to win the Northwest Division uh, at plus uh, two ten, and it's looking like a real good uh, bet now because they're minus two fifty. I'm looking at right now, um, and so people are all on them. I, I don't. Um, Sorry, my computer is like crashing and I can't get the lines <laughs> up. Uh, uh, Kramer, do you have the lines up? I, I did. Hold on. I was just pull. I was. I was actually reading about uh, how much money I was making on the Knicks so far this season. <laughs> uh, Knicks have been so. Oh man, what a what a fun story. All right, yeah, I got the divisional odds up. What do you? Which uh, which one are you looking to hit on? Um, shoot. Sorry, I can't think because I, uh, without looking, I'm, uh, well, I mean, I, horrible. I'm, I'm looking, sorry. I'm looking at the Knicks right now. And I mean, uh, you know, that you can, uh, you can get them at, uh, the Atlantic division at 20, 25 to, or uh, 250 to one right now, Sean. I don't know. I probably wouldn't advise that, but <laughs> Yeah, I mean Clippers plus one thirty five to win the Pacific. That's kind of interesting. Uh, they don't have to do a ton there. Your Suns twenty five to one to win the Pacific. Probably not happening. Uh, yeah. I'm, no. What about okay, the what about what about the Southwest? I mean the Mavs are still the favorite at minus one seventy five, but you got the Pelicans and the Spurs right there at plus five fifty each. Any any interest there? Uh, definitely, definitely. I like I like the Spurs. Uh, at the plus odds, and uh, I also would say that I do like if, if Luca can get it together, I, I would take a shot on Dallas too. I mean, that's it might be a long shot, but 
Um, well, Dallas to win their division is minus one seventy five. Oh wait, that's oh I, was, I heard that wrong. Okay, I would I'm looking at it now. I would say the Rockets at twelve to one. I think the Rockets can get Ooh. it together now that they moved uh, Harden. We gave that, that out on the podcast the other day. Yeah, I, I why not take that twelve to one shot? I could see them surpassing the Mavericks and the Spurs, and the Pelicans are dead in the water. Grizzlies are interesting, but. I, I think that the the Rockets just seem real locked in now. I think Stephen Silas is finally going to be able to run his uh, offense, and uh, the the uptick with Christian Wood has just been a monster, and Oladipo and uh, Wall have just started figuring it out together. So I think they're well. And, and this is this is kind of crazy because the Sixers have a better record than the Brooklyn Nets, and yet still the the Nets are. Are the odds on favorite? The Nets are minus one thirty. Sixers are plus two thirty. I mean, they're number one in the East. I, I do think there's a little value you know in taking why, them Sean? to win the Atlantic. Eight minutes left in the game. Eight minutes left in the season. Like no, a, lot, I, a lot of games. I, I get it, but at plus two thirty, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I like that a lot. I was actually just looking at it it's at plus two fifty on this book, but um, yeah, I would go ahead and and put my. I was going to say that one next is putting me on the 76ers because. I can see the Nets. They've been dropping a lot of. I could see the Nets like not really picking it up until the playoffs and just kind of like riding out the season and getting a three or four seed. I think they'd be fine with that. I mean, yeah. if, if you were trying to like factor in which team cared more about getting the home court, getting the one seed, it's the Sixers. Definitely so. they should. Yeah. Yeah. They should be the most motivated to get those in uh, or to lock up those home games. Sean's uh it's fun that you get to be a basketball fan this year. Hell yeah, man. All right, let's uh let's get to some game picks. Before we do, want to shout out Ace per head. Ace is the place. If you're thinking about starting your own online sports book, just go to aceperhead.com slash SGP. Aceperhead.com slash SGP. Sign up there, get that sweet sign up link, get up to six weeks free. That's right, six weeks of their amazing sports book software completely free. If you use our sign up link, aceperhead.com. Slash S G P Aceperhead.com. Kramer, let's do it. Mavs at Utah Jazz. What do, what do, what's the number at? Uh, I'm seeing it at I'm seeing it at even right now. I haven't uh I haven't got odds on a lot of it. Let's because see. I'm still waiting for Donovan Mitchell to see if he plays or not. Okay. So I don't know. Should we we, we pick it at even? Yeah. Pick it at even, yeah. Here's I, I I threw this theory out into the NBA Slack channel, and if I don't, I, I don't know if it's crazy or not. I haven't actually dug in, but sounds crazy. Your preface makes it sound crazy already. No, Utah, we know Utah has that sneaky elevation, that secret elevation. Nope. So in these series, like like the Mavs are playing, where they're playing two games, not back to back, but spaced out by one day. There, the first game they're going to get killed. They're adjusting the elevation. Then they have the day off. Then that that next game. There inherently is value on the road team because mm. they probably just lost to the Jazz the first time. Can't deal with the elevation, but now they're, you know, they're adjusted. They've been there for forty eight hours. Maybe there's some value on the road team there. McKee, does that is that hold weight? You think? I mean, I can see that story playing out, but Utah has just looked so awesome, and they beat. Uh, the Mavs soundly without Donovan Mitchell last yeah. game. He has a concussion. Uh, he might be back, so we'll have to like wait and see for that. Uh, his ego has a concussion too after Shaq uh, laid into him. <laughs> but that's what makes this Jazz team so fun, and why I like them so much this season, uh, especially with the COVID protocols, is they're likely going to have guys sitting out regularly. They have a strong. They don't have Donovan Mitchell is this the star, but they don't really have another superstar next to him, but they have all these solid players that are playing well as a unit with Mike Conley, Bogdanovich, Ingles, Gobert. Um, and Jordan Clarkson is like the front runner for six man of the year. Well, I'm going to lean into my theory and say that, that Dallas pulls it off. They cover the spread. We'll call it plus four. The, we'll see what it actually uh, closes at though. Well, I mean, you're assuming they're just not going to get into some shenanigans out there oh. in Utah. Well, yeah. What, what shenanigans can you get into in Utah? Uh, you know, there's a lot of soak, <laughs> soak establishments, Sean. soak opportunities. Uh, I'm, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if, if, if I'm going to get rich fading Utah at home this year. So I'm going to take Utah as well. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But I, I, I want there to be something to my theory. So I'm going to lean into Dallas and the points. 
whatever it closes hey. at. What about you, uh, Rich Fat Baby? Are you locking in the I, Utah? I'm going to just stick with the Jazz. I, I picked against them last game and uh, th- th- regretted it deeply. So I'm going to go ahead and keep riding the Jazz until they t- uh, show me different. And one quick future I'll want to throw out. Uh, Quinn, Sm- Quinn Snyder, the Jazz coach, with this crazy run of wins, he is still 25-1 to 1 for Coach of the Year. Ooh. I think that this he be, is going to make a really strong argument because he doesn't have like a LeBron. He doesn't have an AD. So if they keep putting up these wins, right now he's still at the same odds as Thibodeau and Billy Donovan, and those teams have losing records. Uh, that that's a fun way to play it because they could totally be a regular season team too. Yeah, um, yeah and that's – and. And that's how you know. By the way, I'm seeing this at four. For those, uh, I don't, I don't know how accurate this number I'm looking. Yeah, at. I, I think that was what they opened it, it at. Pre- assuming. That was the opener. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bucks versus Pelicans in New Orleans. What what do we got the number at? It is. I've got Bucks minus six and a half. Minus six and a half road favorite. Bucks haven't been great against the spread. Two and four the last six. What are you doing here, uh, Rich Fat Baby? Uh, well, this is the big Eric Bledsoe versus Drew Holiday revenge game. Mm. Uh, so this everyone's talking right. about that. Yeah, everybody is. Um, but I mean, as bad as Milwaukee has been against the spread, New Orleans has been worth a three and seven against the spread in the last ten games, um, and they they just have not looked good with. Uh, Stan Van as the coach yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep riding the Bucks. That's not that bad of a line for a Bucks team that's really been beating up on the bad teams. Kramer, uh, he, listen, you got to be contrarian in the NBA. I'm seeing all the money coming in on the Bucks. R- rich fat baby makes a lot of good points, but y- you know my job, Sean. I'm gonna zig when you zag. Give me the Pelicans trash team. Uh, they've not like like I think you said earlier, dead in the water but no one's on them tomorrow. And I think they're going to show up and cover this spread. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'll throw this in there too. I, I know they're supposed to be locked down because of COVID, but mm. bourbon street on a Thursday night, thirsty Thursday. <laughs> I, I could see some uh, hangover hungover bucks trotting around mm. there in, uh, in new Orleans. So I'll, I'll go <laughs> new Orleans and the big dog. And I did not Very mean to scientific. do. Uh, well, I, I I think there's a decent chance they're out there partying a little bit. And this Bucks team, yeah, they're good, but not. I don't know, not like completely locked in. Going to cover decent numbers on the road. Good. Just need the win. Just need the win. Well, yeah, they've they've won, but not covered. Two and four against the spread last six. So I I, I think that could be a little crazy. Two of your teams here, the the Cleveland Cavaliers squaring off against the New York Knicks. Was on this very podcast. McKee explained to us the popularity of Sexland, and uh, <laughs> Sexland has been doing well. I mean, Sexton single-handedly beat the Brooklyn Nets, but now the upstart Knicks, who are back to back, he did. Yeah, that is that is crazy. Uh, I'm seeing. What are we going to call this one at? It, it looks like it. I'm old, seeing it as straight up right now with yeah. a two oh six total. Yeah, it opened at like minus one and a half, minus two, but now it is a pickup. This is a this is an interesting spread. What are you doing here, uh, McKee? So here's the thing: these teams have already played twice this year, and the underdog has won straight up both times. These are just two scrappy teams. They love being the underdogs, and this is like a real defensive battle. The Knicks giving up the fewest points to opposing teams. Cavs are the seventh fewest. They're sixth and eighth in defensive efficiency. Tibbs and uh, Coach Bickerstaff, which have you, if if ever a NBA coach had the name that sounds more like a high school gym teacher, Coach Bickerstaff. Oh man, right there, yeah. Um, coach B gave me detention. I can already hear it. I really like uh, the Cavs here. Sorry, Kramer, just because they look so much better with Con Sexton back to full health. Garland is back to full health now, so we've got the Sexland going. It's really and, tough to uh, pick against Sexland. You, 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 the Cavs are five and one against the spread in the last six games. Yeah, and, and did we, you know his nickname, according to Basketball Reference, is Young Bull? <laughs> I like it. Did not know that. And I'll say this too with the uh, with the Cavs, Sexton. I mean, we've already seen it with the Nets. Like he seems like a guy in a big game, in a big stage, and. Players do like to play up, you know, play better in the garden. It does seem to like 
motivate some of these guys. And the I, I, I do, I do think Sexton comes in there and has a big game and carries this team to a victory. As chalky as that may sound, I, I think Cleveland gets it done. And it's weird to be a, in a place where you're saying the Cavaliers are chalky. Come on. <laughs> Come yeah, on. I've never heard that before. <laughs> this Knicks team is making you money, Sean. This this Knicks team is yeah, getting overall, it done but... at the counter. Yeah, I mean, come on. They're gonna defend defend serve. That's the garden. This Knicks team has something going they on. Are, they New are... York's a buzz for the first time <laughs> since Jeremy Lin and Amari Stoudemire had them going, you know? They are a fun uh, scrappy it, team. It's a it's a dangerous eight and eleven, Sean. It's a dangerous danger. 11. Well, speaking of danger, last game we're going to hit on Philadelphia 76ers at the Minnesota Timberwolves. I'm nervous for this game, especially coming off uh, against the spread. I mean, Sixers just had a huge win on prime time against the Lakers at home. Now they go on the road. Oh man, I I, I don't. Do you see a number, McKee? Because I'm worried I about this. No, I don't see a number yet because I think uh, Timberwolves are still figuring out who's playing. Yeah, I'm seeing. And then I think Embiid. There's a chance Embiid sits. Yeah, and I, I I don't know if it's a real line in the wild, but seven and a half is out there. Which real quick nugget uh, on Colin Sexton that I didn't didn't just get out. He also ended a Virginia Tech uh, tourney run uh, when he was in college at Alabama too. Oh so really? He, he could he could break my oh, heart. Oh, I do remember that guy in, in uh, yeah. Alabama. Yeah, I think uh, whatever the number closes at, you almost have to take the T Wolves, especially if. If Embiid is out and you're getting like six points or whatever it would close at, do just, you think they're yeah. just not as good on the road? And I think there's a point where the number gets big enough you have to take the T Wolves. Also, yeah. you can see the curve of the earth, I'm told, in Minnesota. So that really? could create some problems. Some northern <laughs> lights. Well, they, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 76ers are two and six against the spread on the road with a point differential uh, against the spread of minus 6.4, which is second worst in the league. And they're, uh, Fourth best in the league against the spread at home. So, who knows what's going on with those guys? I mean, it's 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 the uh, I, I mean a basketball home road splits. Maybe that's the takeaways, right? Still matter. I mean, we see it in college too. I think I think well, it definitely the, matters for the Sixers team. It's it's weird how it seems to matter for some and not others. What are you doing, Kramer? Uh, I mean, I I'm, I'm going to take the points. I, okay, I, I think. I expect that people will be backing the 76ers and the contrarian side will be the Timberwolves. So yeah. And especially if Embiid doesn't play, I, I think, uh, I think you should be in a decent spot to, to cover this. I'm going to still say I'm going to give up the points and take the 76ers <laughs> only T-wolves because are bad. I've lost so many. Every time I seem to take, I, I don't have anything to back this up, but it's just like every time I take Minnesota this year, I lose. And so I'm just hey, not taking we it were again in, until in the, Kat comes back. In the listener mailbag question, we were talking about how uh, we got a question about tracking your picks, unit size, whatever, and how it is good to just realize hey, there's some teams I'm just horrible at picking at. You know, if you do track your picks on uh, like a bet spurts, whatever, a spreadsheet, however you do it, <laughs> then then it is good to just look that right, you know, have visual evidence that you suck at picking a certain team and just know not to go against them. Yeah. You got to look in the mirror, Sean. It's really, it's really uh, just that simple. Well, uh, make sure you check out Ryan, rich, fat, baby McKee on the NBA gambling podcast, rich, fat, baby. What do we got uh, coming up for the fans? Uh, well, to uh, Friday, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're doing another locker room live where anybody can come in and give us their picks and ask questions or Round say whatever table. you want. I mean, just you can talk shit to me. I don't care. Wh- <laughs> whip, the, whip the towel. That's right. That's right. And so, uh, and then you know, Zach and I are doing uh, new podcasts every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we do locker rooms on Tuesday and Friday. So just. Check us out. Shitload of content and NBA picks over at the uh, sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Tons of great content loaded up, ready to go, dropping for the Super Bowl and uh, upcoming. We're, we're dabbling with hockey. Got some hockey stuff going on. We, of course, let it ride. America's favorite game show. We're going to be oh. taping that in just a minute. And I should say that, uh, you know, Moon off, Zach and I pick every game against the spread at uh, sg.pn slash NBA picks. And thank you very much. I am back to 500 on Hell the season. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Is, it's been really tough, and uh, Zach is well below that, as is Moon. So there you go. 
You're on a heater, baby. Hey, again, all you have to be uh, when there's a bear, just faster than the slowest guy. And you're you you're go. doing that. You're taking care of business. Thank you for Some participating fun. in the sports gambling podcast. Some hunger game shit. Let Moon off or Zach know one of them will be killed shortly. <laughs> Well, Moon off. It's not just straight picks. He he dabbles in all this sort of uh, derivative crazy stuff. Check it all out in the <laughs> Slack. Thank you for tuning in. Toss us a five star rating <laughs> and review. Give yourself a chance to win on Merch Monday for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean Stack of the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Nah, cheers, Sean. Cheers, Kramer. Let it ride. <laughs> <laughs>